Let's see how we can implement a rate limiting in next years, step by step. I'm quickly going to create a new Next.js project using this create next app CLI tool. Let's use the latest version of this. And let's call this rate limiter next years. I'm going to choose all of the default options. And then I'm going to open this folder inside of my code editor. Inside of this app directory, I'm going to create a new folder called API. Within this API folder, I'm going to create another folder called, let's say, get user data. This is going to be a route handler. That means I need to create a file called route.ts inside of this folder. Now, whenever I receive a get request to this particular endpoint, I need to return a response. So let me quickly do next response.json. And I'm going to just say hello world for now. If you want, you can also pass a status code like this, right? I will then start the development server. I'll open localhost 3000 in my browser and you can see that I'm able to access my application. Let's try accessing the API endpoint that we have created, which is API get user data. Okay, so you can see that I'm getting this HTTP error method 405. That means I've done something wrong. Let me quickly check. Ah, so it seems like I've done this export default function. This should just be export function get. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna come here and reload this one. And now we can see the response from the backend. Hello world, perfect. Now at this point, a user can make as many requests as they want to this API endpoint. Let's see how we can restrict this based on the IP address of the user on a per interval basis. For that, I'm gonna be installing a package. Let me quickly terminate the process in the terminal. And I'm going to install this package called rate limiter flexible. By the way, do keep in mind that when we talk about rate limiting, there are multiple locations you can implement rate limiting. And it highly depends upon how you have organized your application. What kind of infrastructure are you using to host your application? The rate limiter thing that I'm talking about in this video is going to show you how do you implement rate limiting at the application level. All right. Now this rate limiter flexible package basically gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of where do you want to store this rate limiting information. For example, you can store that information right inside of a server memory or inside of a Redis instance or inside of your database, wherever you want. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm simply going to be importing rate limiter memory. Okay. And then I'm going to create a new instance of the rate limiter by calling the rate limiter memory. When you call rate limiter memory, you need to pass an object. This object has two important options you need to provide. Now, the first option is points. So let's say just for the time being, I'm giving this four points. Now this points will make sense in a little bit of time. Just bear with me. The second important property that you need to specify is the duration. And here you need to specify the duration in seconds. So here's what I'm basically saying that every 60 seconds, only four points are allowed. Okay. All right. Now, whenever we receive a get request, what we can do, we can add a try catch block here. And what we are going to be doing is we're simply going to get this rate limiter instance that we have created. We are going to call this consume method on it. This consume method expect you to pass two argument. In the first argument, you need to specify a key and key can be the IP address of the client in this case. So just as a placeholder, I'm going to add client IP, something like this. And then in the second argument, you specify how many points you want to consume for this specific request. So let's say I'm only going to be consuming two points for this specific request. All right. Now, if for some reason we are not able to consume two points in the current interval, this is going to throw an error, which is going to be captured by this catch block. We do not need this error here. And at this point, I can simply return a response. Next response.json. Let me say the message is going to be too many requests. And then for the status, I can specify 429. All right, so here's what we are doing. We have created a new rate limiter instance. We're storing the limiter information right inside of the server memory. Whenever we receive a get request to this API endpoint, which is this API get user data, we are consuming two points. 
if we are not able to consume two points that means we do not have any points left for this particular user in that case we are saying that you have made too many requests please try later but if this is fine we are simply returning the original response okay let's see if this is working as expected or not let me quickly go to the browser i'll do request so this is one okay sorry about that let me quickly start the development server all right let's try this again this is the request one this is the request two and then this is the request three request four request five hmm what is going on so it seems like something is not right let's see what is going on ah we have made a mistake we actually need to await this and in order to await this we need to convert this to an async function all right sometimes i am so stupid let's try this again this is one this is two and then from the third request you can see that i'm getting this message too many requests now this is problematic right now because we are not using the client ip we have just hard coded this key for now so let's see how we can get the ip address of the user for that what i'm going to be doing is i'm simply going to create a new folder at the root of the project let's call this utils okay inside of this i'm going to create a file called ip.ts the first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to import headers from next headers like this and then i'm going to export an async function out of this file let's call this get user ip and then i'll simply get the headers list i'll extract the ip address of the user and then we'll return ip from here let's go back to the route handler and within this one what we'll do is we'll get the ip address of the user so let's call this user ip i'm going to import get user ip and then i'm simply going to pass the user ip over here if you want we can also log this to see what kind of ip we are getting at this point all right now let's see if this is working as expected or not i'll come here i'll reload this page this is the second request and now we are seeing this too many request but if we open the terminal you'll see that for the user ip we are getting something like and the reason for that is because right now i'm doing the local development so just to test things out what i'm gonna do i'm quickly going to start a tunnel using ngrok so i'm gonna say ngrok http and then i'm going to forward all the requests to port 3000 now if you have never used ngrok what this basically does is that it will give you a url like you can see over here now whenever you try to open this url it is going to make a request to your local development server so if i just click on this you'll see that we are loading that exact page so i can actually go to api get user data and you'll see that we are getting the hello world response but if you take a look at the terminal you'll see that we have a different kind of ip address because now the request is not coming from the local server it is coming from somewhere else to our local server which has a different ip so let's see if this is working as expected or not we have both of the instance open so we have this localhost 3000 i'm able to make a request to this localhost 3000 this is the second request and from the third request we are not able to make a re any request but if i come here you'll see that i'm able to make a request to this one so that means both of these ip address are being rate limited separately perfect now i'm quickly going to terminate the ngrok process if you want we can also move this rate limiter configuration to a different file so i can create a file called limiter.ts and then here i can simply import rate limited memory create a new instance of the rate limiter and export this out of this file i can then go to route.ts i can get rid of all of this and now i can import this rate limiter from this utils limiter file all right so this is how you implement rate limiting in case of route handlers if you want you can implement the same kind of thing within a server action also let me show you so inside of this app directory i'm going to create an actions folder you can create this anywhere you want it doesn't really matter and then inside of this actions folder let me create a file guard get user data.ts and in this server action here's what i'm going to be doing first of all i'm marking this entire file as a server action file that means all of the function that i'm going to be exporting out of this file will create their own endpoint okay so here's what i'm doing whenever i call this function i'm getting the client ip 
I'm consuming two points and I'm simulating that we are doing something for two seconds. Then I'm returning this message hello world. If you're not able to consume two points, we are returning this message too many requests. For all other scenarios, we're simply returning something went wrong. Now, in order to use this server action, I can simply come to my home page. I can get rid of all of this content and replace this with this simple content over here. And here's what I'm doing in this file. So first of all, this is going to be a client component. We are importing use state and get user data or server action. We are creating some state variables. And here we have just a simple div that has this button. When we click on this button, we call this get user data server action. We set the response by passing the result, whatever we get from the server action itself. And then we stop showing the loader. So, so if we just go to the home page, let me quickly go to localhost 3000. This is what we have right now. Now, if I click on this get user data, this is hello world. Let me make another request. So this is request number two. Okay, it's still working. But if I try to make the third request, you'll see that it says too many requests. All right, so that is how you do it. That is how you implement rate limiting within your Nexus application, both inside of server actions and then route handlers. Now, if you want to protect all of the routes inside of your application with this same logic, all you need to do is you need to put this inside of a middleware and that's it. If you found this video valuable, do like and subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.